Shot. That looks good. I can totally see why people uh, don't like to record while doing tape sealing. Because uh, it's a lot of variables. Try to keep a good camera angle, keep the mess off your hands, mess off the tank. Meanwhile, the uh, tape sealant is curing. It is quite the race. It's a bummer. 50 grams was not enough. Uh, lesson learned. Those of you out there getting to the stage, I had 50 grams of sealant, or 55 grams with the ratio. Anyways, 50 grams sealant uh, was not enough, so I'm going to go ahead and do another 40 to be safe, because I did ribs here. So, do another 40 grams. It should work. What are we doing? Diffling. What are you doing? <laughs> Bouncing and <diffling. laughs> Baby still won't come out, so put Amanda to work. I, I told her that um, dimpling and deburring helps to induce labor. They have a bunch of other remedies, but here we go. Uh, we're a couple ribs deep, and she's already deburred. The skin for me deburred stiffeners and is now dimpling. So those of you out there, I think we need to get together, make a couple of fake blog posts about airplane building helping for uh, labor. Um, how's it going? What are we doing? It's going good. I'm excited. Yeah. Full term today, so just going to yeah. keep going at it until... Do tomorrow. it comes. Yeah. Do tomorrow. Exciting. And then, uh, yes, we do have a piece of cardboard underneath there for her bouncy ball. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, but going really well. We already have this tank over here complete. Have not pressure tested it yet. You'll see there's a balloon on the other side. Um, and this is honestly there just to keep bugs out. Um, just want to keep anything out of there. Um, and I'm refraining from, from blowing this up. I think we're, what, three days out now? Yeah. Yeah, my buddy Clay, who's building um, here in the Phoenix area, he told me, he's like, do not blow it up. Do, don't do it. Leave it alone. Don't touch it. So I hear his voice in my head. So I'm not trusting, touching it. I promise, Clay. I'm leaving it. I'm not touching it. 
Um, but yeah, and then the other other one here going together well. Not getting any of it on camera because it's almost like we've done this before. <laughs> uh, so very repetitive, but have this one up to the stage of uh, scuffing. So I was just scuffing down uh, anywhere we have any rib lines and whatnot. So while I'm scuffing, she's dimpling and doing other fun stuff. Uh, but one thing I wanted to mention real quick here, on the first one you probably saw, I was very tedious with like putting tape down and having really crisp lines and making it look so beautiful and perfect. Um, this one I didn't. And the reason being, because show me in that one <laughs> what the inside scuff lines look like if they veered left or right by an eighth of an inch. So anyway, it's just freehanding it and honestly it looks great. Um, so. Anyways, we're doing that. We'll go ahead and I think when she's done, actually you're done. Almost. I gotta find more work for you. I know. Um, <laughs> once she's done, we'll get this thing dimpled and then start putting uh, putting things together with tank sealing again. And this time she's gonna do it, she promised me. Alrighty, quick check-in. Uh, you'll see behind me I have the tank completed, or at least for the first tank, uh, with a balloon there, which I'll get to momentarily here. Uh, but other than that, uh, off camera, I've gotten the, to the point of just having the skin stiffeners uh, back riveted on. So skin stiffeners are on, uh, those are on there. I have the drain flange uh, on there and fuel tank flange there. Um, so all that stuff is on, ready to go, ready to move forward. Um, but I am so happy with how this other tank here turned out. Uh, so you'll notice I do have a balloon on it. Uh, I've already gone ahead, let me get this camera moving around. Uh, I've already gone ahead and not only done the balloon test here, but also done balloon plus Dawn dish soap and a spray bottle and basically dousing the whole thing up and down every single rivet, shifting it in this cradle so that, so that way I can get access to the rivets that were hidden. Anyways, perfect. There's no leaks, no bubbles. This balloon here um, is full. Uh, I've already done a balloon test before this. This one here I think is going on close to 24 hours now and it kind of just goes up and down with the temperature of the garage. Uh, last night when I put it out here, it was about this size and this morning, uh, I was watching on camera, it got a little bit smaller and then it got bigger again. So anyways, it's holding air, it's, it has no leaks whatsoever, uh, so really happy there. If you're curious as to how I did this, I did not buy any parts. Um, so you'll notice this is the standard flange here that's supposed to go here, it has the filter on the inside. Uh, but what I did was I just took a balloon and got it all the way, tucked the, the edge all the way up in there into that flange. Let's make it closer for you. Yeah, I got this all the way up in there, and then I took uh, just this, I don't know, bailing, or just some regular old wire, put wire around it, and got way in there. And the first time I tried this, I did it just on the threads uh, from this flange. Did not work, it still leaked. So get it, tuck it way up in there, and it's kind of a pain to get this wire all the way back there, and then go ahead and get it cranked down. But it will not leak, it holds it tight, there's no bubbles around it, I already doused it before with Dawn. No leaks whatsoever. Um, and then on this side, I plugged my uh, fuel return line hole there, uh, just with the standard Allen fuel fitting, or hex head, whatever, fuel fitting there. So that's sealed up. And then over here for the vent line, actually I took a piece of um, your regular quarter inch tubing, jammed the end full of Pro Seal uh, with the other end flared. Uh, but the Pro Seal, uh, it helps to, of course, keep the air out. So anyways, Pro Seal plugs it up. I let this dry for a long time. Uh, but again, no leaks here. So all this is good. No leaks, uh, no leaks whatsoever anywhere. Uh, but that's how I did my test. And again, this balloon, I've done this a couple of times now. Yesterday is when I filled this one up. It hasn't changed since then. Yeah, so anyways, that's how I'm doing this here. And again, this is my second time with the, with the balloon test. The first time I had it barely inflated. And then I did a little more research and found that it's probably gonna be safe to fill the whole balloon up. So filled the whole balloon up. Yeah, and as far as filling it up goes, um, First time, I think it was probably a little bit dangerous, but first time I put that regulator on the air compressor really, really low until barely any air would come out. And I just took the air nozzle, pushed it up against here and slowly let air in until the balloon started to inflate. Uh, the second go around here with the current setup, uh, last night the way I blew this up to do a second test on it uh, was actually I just pushed in on it and then blew in with my mouth, which is kind of hard. And also if you let any air out, it blows back like these Pro Seal curing fumes in your face, so probably not healthy to, to breathe in. Uh, but I saw it on a caretaker video where he did that for his uh, his build. Um, so, anyways, really good channel there. Caretakers videos are, are awesome to, to find help here with uh, with this stuff. But, anyways, took some advice from his video there, blew it up with my mouth, and that way I knew that I was not going to be exceeding the uh, uh, the capacity of the tank because I don't think I could blow up a tank with my own uh, lung pressure. 
but I could probably blow up a tank with an air compressor. Um, so that's why I erred on the side of caution. Used my mouth the second time. Uh, just blew it up that way, just pushing on it, blowing inside. But again, don't breathe it in because it smells nasty. As soon as you let any air out, you can smell that, that pro seal carrying in there. So probably some bad fumes, but anywho, that's it. And then uh, as far as the, uh, as far as the fuel cap goes, I know a lot of people end up with leaks here. When I first had it, as it came, uh, it leaked. But then the second go around on the inside here is a little hex nut on the back side. Just turned it, I think a quarter of a turn. Um, and it did make this have a little more pressure getting this latch down, but no leaks. Uh, passes the balloon test. I don't have to worry about playing with tape and whatnot. And then after this, I can always back that nut off if I don't need that much pressure to seal out air. Um, so anywho, that's it. Back to it. Um, other than that, uh, I have a lot of riveting here to do. I'm gonna start doing ribs next. Uh, still on baby watch, don't know when baby will be here. So why it's taking a sweet time. We're about a week past the original due date. Uh, so we'll see when he comes. I'm sure things will slow down when he gets here. But for now, we're building fuel tanks. We're gonna get back to it. I'll check back in later. wanted to mention where I'm at so uh, doing the fuel float on the right fuel tank I have all the ribs in I've already done the vent line uh, that's already run all the way down the duration there I already have the end ribs in everything's ready to rock and roll up to the point of doing the fuel float um, which you'll notice is functioning properly so I have nice uh, travel and clearance on both ends and I'm also getting uh, correct readout at full and empty so happy there um, but what I wanted to get to is uh, how I got here. So this is not in the instructions. So the instructions only cover the left fuel tank. So it makes it very difficult um, to do the right one because you have to do a little bit of um, a little bit of thinking and trying to figure out how the heck you do it because things are different on the right versus the left. For instance, the sender, the uh, this little unit here, this is viewing from the top looking down onto the left tank. You'll notice this wire here is going into that part there so that the wire is feeding down and then forward into the, the the forward leading edge of the tank where you'll notice on the right one the only orientation I can get it to fit involves that wire coming from the back side and going rearward so I knew that was going to throw things off the other thing I realized that was going to throw things off is fitting it inside of there I realized that you do have to have that that foam portion of the float pointing forward towards your vent line, forward towards the leading edge. Uh, and what I found is if I mirror image this and mirror image it to the other side and made that same wire, so I took that, took this drawing here, took a, just a piece of copper wire, stripped out the backside so I can snap it into that little piece um, just temporarily. Anyways, made a mirror image. So I took this, mirror image it there. This wire here goes forward towards the leading edge. This wire here I bent rearward um, towards the rear. And what I found was when I did it in this orientation, looking at my fuel float, it was actually, the foam was pointed in the wrong direction. So I had it just like this, but the foam was actually pointed backwards, uh, which was going to interfere with that stiffener there. So what I did was I unsnapped this foam piece. I just kind of put a little bit of pressure on it and snapped it out and then reoriented. So it was previously facing backwards, pulled it out, reoriented it facing forward, snapped it back in place, and we're in business. So um, that's how I did that. Uh, hopefully this helps someone out there. I could not for the life of me find anyone mentioning this in the forums or anywhere. So maybe I just got a one-off different part from everyone else. Um, but that is how I did it. I uh, did it in one go, did not have to reorder, which is nice. Uh, so again, going back to these wires, I think I mentioned previously, highly recommend um, just using some regular old copper wire. Uh, but anyways, highly recommend doing that so you don't make any mistakes. But 
real happy with how that turned out. So that's that. Other than that, getting the fine tuning adjustments done, I didn't want to put strain on, didn't want to put any strain on this device here uh, when kind of bending it to get it to meet the bottom and meet the top. So what I found was using fluting pliers, uh, just in whatever orientation, wherever you want to bend it, uh, is nice because you can get really nice small bends in it. Uh, like you'll see here, I have a nice little bend right there that gets my down motion uh, to go all the way down. Uh, while still providing all the way up. So anyways, making small adjustments like that, or you'll notice off the side here, I do have a bend upwards there, and then another bend downward there, and that's to make room to get it to clear uh, that vent line, because it was before rubbing on the, uh, the vent line there. So anyway, that's where we're at. So moving on forward, we'll go ahead and get this installed permanently, pro-sealed, and uh, get ready to do the back baffle. We'll get back to it. Alrighty, quick check-in. I'm using this Semco gun uh, from my buddy Clay. Super helpful here. Uh, I would say this is probably where it's the most beneficial to use this gun. I, I wouldn't say it's required. I got away with using the larger syringes on the other fuel tank. Uh, but laying down these consistent beads all the way along the back portion uh, for that back baffle, really, really simple to load that gun up. Um, and just get a nice consistent bead all the way down. Uh, not getting on camera, it is really hard to film and work with Pro Seal. So um, hopefully this helps. But uh, that is the uh, the end product of using that gun. Um, you'll see nice consistent beads all the way along, and then able to kind of pull it up along the edge. So, anyways, works well. Thanks, Clay, for letting me borrow this. Get back to it. Alrighty, so fuel tank number two is done, and a uh, new addition to the family. So here's Wyatt. He'll be uh, he'll be looking forward to doing some uh, some flying in the future. So he's been telling me, Dad, get out there and finish building that plane. So that's what I've been doing. Yeah. So anyways, happy with the tank here. I know the second tank I didn't have as much footage, uh, probably because of this guy here. Uh, but no, I really just wanted to jam through it. Working with tank seal, I knew I was number one fighting summer. Uh, it's getting warm here in Phoenix, and tank sealing here is much faster in the heat. So fighting that, um, and then also fighting, uh, wanted to be inside hanging out with this dude. Uh, so that's done. So now working on the flaps next, we'll have a lot smaller sessions where I can come out here and, and work for 30 minutes or so, not be tied to full two-hour working sessions uh, working with tank sealing. So anywho, flaps are up next, uh, so we'll get to that. And uh, yeah, so anyways, if you made it this far, thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, feedback, or you just want to say hi, say hi down in the comments down below. And uh, yeah, we'll see you in the next one. So adios. Adios!